Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Nark and welcome back to my channel where it is my goal to help you find your way home. The goal of today's video is to clarify down payment and closing costs. By the end of the video, you will know the differences between them, how to estimate how much those closing costs might be, and some of my pro tips on how to keep your closing costs as minimal as possible so that maybe you can put extra money towards your down payment or even store it away in savings. What is down payment? Down payment is a percentage of the total purchase price of your house that you as a buyer are responsible for bringing out of pocket that gets applied towards the actual purchase price, the sales price on your contract. This percentage that you're responsible for is dictated by which loan type you end up using. For example, a VA loan requires 0% down, so you wouldn't have to have a down payment there. But for something like an FHA loan, you do have to have at least a 3.5% down payment. So let's think of some simple math for an example. If you were using an FHA loan and had to bring a 3.5% down payment, and you were buying a $100,000 house, that means that you would bring $3,500 that would be paid as your down payment, then you would be financing the rest of the home and that would be financing $96,500. So even though I do talk about bringing the down payment, this is not something that's due right away when you go under contract. You will be bringing your down payment, the money for it, to closing when you are signing off on all your papers and officially buying the house. So I hope that this gives you a clear idea of what down payment is. Next, we are going to break down closing costs. Comment below and let me know what loan type you are considering using for your home purchase. Simply put, closing costs are all of the fees that you as a buyer incur when taking out a home loan. The fees that you may incur include things like lending origination fees, underwriting fees, things like title work, the list goes on and on. Even prepaids like real estate taxes and potentially paying a few months of your insurance in advance are grouped into your closing costs. Now that we've learned about down payment and closing costs, Let's get into the big misconception that goes around both of them. It's easy to think that you may have down payment or closing costs, or that one covers the other, when in fact, as a home buyer, you will likely be responsible for a down payment and closing costs. Your closing costs do not cover your down payment, and your down payment does not cover your closing costs. Unless you are using a no down payment loan, like the USDA or a VA, you will definitely have a down payment. And regardless of the loan type, even those non down payment loans are still going to have closing costs. So it's very important that you know not only how much you're responsible for for down payment, but also how to estimate how much your closing costs are going to be. So remember, regardless of what loan type you are using and whether you'll be bringing a down payment or not, you will have closing costs. As you, as an educated home buyer, are planning out how much money you need to save to cover your down payment and your closing costs, I want to share with you a little calculation that you can do to estimate how much those closing costs will be for the house that you are planning to buy. Now, from working with clients, I have found that the percentage of closing costs is often between three and 4% of the total purchase price. Now, I know I mentioned that closing costs are a bundle of fees. Some of those are percentages, some of those are flat fees. We don't need to worry about all of those individual fees. As a whole, take your total purchase price for the house that you are interested in buying and play around with what three and 4% looks like. You're probably going to have this extra amount as closing costs that will be tacked on to your purchase 
in addition to that down payment that you're already planning for. So let's think back to that example when I was talking about you purchasing a $100,000 house with an FHA loan that requires a 3.5% down payment. You would be required at minimum to bring that 3.5% down, which would come out to $3,500. Now, if we are estimating what the closing costs might be, let's go ahead and use that 3% calculation. That would mean that we would be at a $100,000 purchase price, bringing potentially another $3,000 to cover your closing costs. This means that you could be responsible for up to $6,500 out of pocket when purchasing a $100,000 home. And if you've been reading articles, watching videos, and thinking that you could get into a house for just maybe that 3,500, this can get scary really quickly if you're not prepared. So I want to share some extra tips on how you can bring that amount of closing costs down so that hopefully you can save a little bit of extra money there. So as you've learned in this video, the amount that you need to bring for down payment is inevitable. Your loan type is going to dictate that and we can't change it. But there are some things that we can do to lower your amount that you need to bring for closing costs. The first thing that you can do is try to negotiate that the seller pays some of your closing costs for you. And this is something that you can write and negotiate into any offer that you are making on a house. Now I will tell you this, in very competitive markets where houses are selling very quickly or you know you're gonna be up against multiple offers, this isn't always necessarily a very smart move on a negotiation standpoint. Just because you are asking more from the seller's pocket and that could make your offer less desirable than someone else's. But if the market is pretty mild and the inventory is good, I would definitely try this. See if you can get the sellers to cover some of your closing costs. This is a great thing to ask for. Additionally, you can also shop around for which lender you go to as well as which insurance company you use. Although these don't have as big of an effect as potentially getting the seller to pay for your closing costs, different lenders, even if you're getting the same loan type, will differ on things like origination fees. So if you're shopping around trying to get the best interest rate you can, you might as well go ahead and look at their fees to see who's gonna give you a better deal there. And the same thing goes for insurances. Although your insurance mainly affects your monthly payment that you're gonna be making on a house, it will affect those closing costs just a little bit. So getting the most affordable but still adequate policy for your house that you can will only help to reduce those closing costs in a whole. If you took away some value from this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I put out new videos specifically with home buying tips and first time home buyer information in an effort to help you find your way home.